All right, our next assignment is called the cloud creature assignment. If we look at the past student work, you'll see that we're not um, free completely yet of our composites. So we just finished putting our creature into our landscape. Now we go back to our creature, now that we've refined it, and we're going to be interpreting them through clouds. So like the other projects, you are not allowed to paint. You are not allowed to add your own pixels. You're only allowed to modify existing pixels. But this time, the pixels you are going to composite with are all cloud-based. And we are going to take a lot more liberties with the clouds because we can, we can smudge them, we can paint with them. They're basically like a clay that we can mold. Now the goal here is to make the cloud suggestive of your creature, but also believable as a cloud. And so some creatures require very weird cloud forms. <laughs> so when you start Google searching for clouds and high, high resolutions of clouds, you're going to see that there's a wide variety, different types of, of surface quality, different types of sh shading, um, different edge control, issues but the most successful ones will kind of match the general shape of the character but will also bring in some of the lighting and some of the mass of the character as well and set them in a context that's very believable whether it's cloud seen from far away like this or cloud seen up close so this is a challenge this project it's not usually anyone's favorite but you'll learn a lot from it. Occasionally people really like it. You'll notice that some of them will just take place on a blue background and sometimes we'll, we'll actually just paint a gradation for that, so I guess we're adding pixels there. But others will use other clouds as context to frame their creature. Now, of course, we don't get very long for this. because it would take a long time to perfect. But let's see how we get started. It all starts with our, our creature assignment. So it's a good time to make sure you're organized as well. To make sure your resubmissions. Let me see. Like my landscape resubmission here get put into your correct assignment folders and then everything else gets organized so that when we come to the midterm and we want to print, we know where our highest quality PSD versions are. Okay, now, oh, I saw that this actually needs to go into assignment one. That's my resubmission one, so that should go right here. Mark that as blue. Okay, now what do we need for assignment four? The cloud creature. Do next class, another quick turnover. We go to assignment two, and we're going to open up our PNG. Just because we don't need any layers except for this layer which is the cutout of our character, our creature on a blank landscape. So your, your most uh, recently resubmitted and refined assignment too. Then what do we need? Well, we need lots of cloud reference. And we need it to be large, but clouds are soft. So we can grow them without too much difficulty. So if I just search clouds and then do a, an image search, I am looking for images that are 8 megapixels or bigger, and that are photos. But I'm also thinking of my creature, and I'm seeing kind of this, this structure here and how it's lit at top and there are certain clouds that look more like that than other clouds this cloud doesn't really look like that much 
these kind of cumulus clouds look more like that. <coughs> Excuse me, like cauliflower heads. Some clouds are much more established looking. Some are much softer, don't feel as substantial. And you're going to start collecting quite a bit. Because it needs to be suggestive of your creature, but it also has to be a believable cloud to fully succeed at this difficult project. All right, so I've got some cloud reference. I also just want a really big sheet of cloud that I can use, as well as all of these little attributes. You'll notice that the clouds are lit from different directions sometimes. Like this one's more lit from behind, so it's, it's dark in the middle. And you want to kind of match that with your cloud. You can see some digital artists having fun with this. So that cloud, that's very particular. It might be great for your creature, but you'd only want to find cloud reference that was backlit like that. Okay, now I'm going to look for cloud reference that's bigger than 8 by or just 8 megapixels because I need one sheet of like solid cloud texture. It's just really big. So I'm going to go all the way to 12 megapixels and see something that's lit from above. Actually, that's pretty nice, even though it has the rim lighting. It almost doesn't matter what you use. I'm going to show you how we, um, we kind of treat this like cookie dough, and we roll it out. We can even use that, but it's nicer if it has some color content. This one has some potential, too. Okay, so all of these are going to be ones I use, and I'm going to save these all into my folder. But the first thing I'm going to do is just take this kind of blanket of clouds, bring this in, See, 12 megapixels isn't too big when you need the whole thing. But it's, it's cloud, so I can pretty safely grow it and even warp it a little bit so it's cloud texture. I'm going to take the opacity down so I make sure that the clouds cover my creature. And then I'm basically going to roll it out so I've just rolled it out, pushed it into each corner. If I need to, I can transform it and warp it. Like this little tower is getting in the way a little bit. So let me push that down a little. Get some of these edges in. So it's like rolling out dough. And now I'm going to use my character. This is what's new. I'm going to use the silhouette of my character, just the shape, as a cookie cutter. So this is how I do it. I go to my character layer. I use the magic wand. And I, I can make sure contiguous is turned off in case there's any little like floating window within my character. And I click with a tolerance of 32, but it shouldn't matter. I click on the empty space around my character. And so what that does is that makes a perfect selection of just the edges. And you can see that the reason I had contiguous turned off is so it also got this little window. And we're almost done. Now I need to change that selection from being the outside to being the inside. So I say select inverse. And now it's just this inside that's selected. And this is the new technique. Selections can be moved between layers in Photoshop. So even though I have this selected, I can now select the cloud layer. And I can duplicate Command J to give myself a cloud, a creature shaped cutout of the clouds. And this will be the way I, I start to build it up. And if you want to give yourself an idea of the challenge ahead of you, I can create a new blank layer underneath that cloud cutout. And I'm just going to do a quick gradient paint job. Of blues. And you can see that we're kind of doing a cloud on that kind of setting. 
could change this one. Give me a slightly more interesting blue. And then do that gradient painting again. Of course, this is just a holdout for what I'll be doing a little bit later. Okay, so now I have to bring in all that other cloud reference. And what you can do between now and next class, besides redoing and resubmitting your initial three pro assignments, making them as perfect as possible, is you can start thinking about and looking for cloud reference that's appropriate to your creature. Making sure it's at least eight megapixels. And the reason I'm bringing them all in, I'm not even saving them to the desktop because this is just palette material for me to paint with, to move around. I'm going to bring them all into one Photoshop file and then just save that file and that's the only file I need to work with. And that file is going to be my assignment four file. And I encourage you over the weekend, look up at the Texas sky. We have nice big skies, nice heavy clouds. If we're lucky enough to have some clouds. And just play that childish game of trying to find a creature in there. And realize it takes very little to kind of connect the dots and see something more imaginative in those cloud forms. And that's what we're going to use our imagination for with this next assignment. And that's all there is to it. That's my introduction. Do check your reference. Right? This one is looking pretty bad. So I'm not going to use that one. You don't want to have bad reference. It's as simple as just searching clouds. But if you want to get more specific, specific, you can go for certain types of clouds if you find that there's certain shapes that help you more than others. That's a nice one right there. But there's plenty of cloud reference online. Okay, that will do it. I will see you guys next week or in office hours. And we'll call this cloud creature assignment four.